Maybe it's a little too big. Yeah, that's not a thing. Big ultra wide monitors are rad. When it comes to my tech, I'm a drive it to the wheels fall off kind of guy. I had a cute little Asus 1080p gaming monitor no idea how old this is. It came with 3D glasses back when that was a hot fad. Well past time for me to move on. The folks at Cooler Master sent over their new 34 inch curved gaming monitor for me to take on a test drive, share some thoughts, and I'm not gonna shock anyone here, but boy howdy, was this a huge upgrade. This is the top of the line option in Cooler Master's monitor lineup, but I think it positions itself well in sort of the mid tier nicer range of gaming screens. A 34 inch diagonal 1500R screen running at 144 hertz and with a resolution of 3440 by 1440. And it has a bunch of those important specs like HDR 400, a 98% DCI P3, 4000 to one contrast ratio on a quantum dot VA panel with support for FreeSync Premium. Yeah, I had to look up the whole VA panel thing. Vertical alignment panels are noted for having better contrast over IPS screens, but in the articles I've read on this tech, it wasn't as common to use VA panels in gaming monitors. So it's kind of cool to see that tech on a screen with this fast of a refresh and a 0.5 millisecond response time. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Just in terms of design, I love that the front face on this is simple. Again, just the little Cooler Master shape is the only badging visible to the user. A 1500R curve, it's bold. It's genuinely too big to use in my office on the included stand. Yeah, you know, I got a little B-roll of that setup, but I just don't have the desk space to keep it set up like that. The stand is pretty nice. It's got the standard height and angle and twist options, has some RGB, built in, it's good. I just don't have the space for this. My desk is a mess. I had it on this for about a half hour and then I immediately moved it to one of my medium duty monitor arms. It's been great being able to sort of move this around and angle it and pivot it, it's working really well. The monitor has great IO options. We got one display port, two HDMI and one USB-C with video input support. That also has up to 65 watt USB power delivery. So you could plug one cable into a laptop and charge that laptop at the same time. Also a USB-B input with a pair of USB-A ports on the side, so you can run it as a hub for other accessories connected to your PC, run your mouse and keyboard cables if that's the thing you need to do. Gave off a great first impression, but the only gripe I had getting to know this monitor I don't love the layout of the OSD. It's a little unfamiliar how you move through menus and there's two flavors of the menu layouts. There's a smaller quick actions option and a larger, more expanded menu. It took me a little time to get it. I had to make some small adjustments to match it up with my art monitor. Out of the box, I feel this screen was a little too warm. You know, the whites had a slightly ruddy look to them. The panel and screen tech handle those adjustments great but the OSD menus, they took me a second to figure out. It's not even so much that they look simple. I don't mind simple, plain text. You know, it kind of reminds me of using an old BIOS. I like simple, but the way you move in one direction and the other direction is a cancel option feels a little clunky. You know, sometimes a left click is a cancel or a return. Sometimes a center press will get you out of a menu it doesn't stay consistent. Now, I don't use any fancy calibration hardware, I'm an audio guy by trade, but just eyeballing different alien tests and shooting a few samples with my camera in slow motion frame rates, I do think it's worth going through the overdrive settings and switching out of dynamic. It's something that bothers me on some of our new smartphone. How a display scales with information on the screen can sometimes deliver a lag or a twitch which stands out more from the rest of an otherwise fluid experience. Just like how folks should spend a little time eyeballing the color, using those great options for picture modes and color adjustments and HDR settings, it's worth doing the same for the style of Refresh too. This is far and away more colorful, it's contrastier, it's a prettier image than my old gaming monitor. I'm not sure the change from 120 hertz to 144 is practically much different. But again, for the articles I've read on VA panels, this seems to be a respectable performer in a mainstream 
high refresh rate market. And there are some small speakers, little five watt stereo jobs, they're fine. They will get the job done. If you don't have any other speakers, they're fine. It's fine. I'm an audio guy by trade. But the size here, that's what's key. I've always unintentionally run mismatched displays. It's it's always by accident. I never need to replace. I never need to replace both screens at the same time, and I end up swapping displays out individually. So now I have one 4K display, and I use that for editing and color. I'm not great at color grading, but I trust that screen when I'm editing, and now I have an enormous display for my timeline or to keep multiple windows up at the same time. Now the idea of using different task views is kind of silly for the insane amount of information I can keep up on both screens at once. It's been clutch for hosting and streaming my podcast. I gave up that little 1080p monitor and now running OBS and NVIDIA and browsers and chat, I've got proper space for it all all at the same time. <laughs> Plus, just as a happy coincidence, both of my screens now are super small bezel and I can literally peek a full mirrorless camera between them without too much distracting looking near the borders of my podcasting setup. It does look silly when I try to look to the edges of this ultra wide though. I'm really reaching. I've been doing this so long, my brain just thinks in terms of dual displays and having specific workspaces. But if you're sitting at the right distance from your screen, ultra wide makes a lot of sense, especially for folks looking to simplify their previous dual screen setup, but they still want all the real estate. Image quality is great. I'm not as concerned with viewing angles on screens like this. I think this is built to occupy your field of view for a single person sitting in front of it. I just don't know where we'd be as concerned with angled viewing. Now this has very good viewing angles and obviously part of that changes as the panel curves, but this is a monitor, not really a TV. And you really want to have your face in the curve. Although now that I said that out loud, I suppose this could pull double duty in a small bedroom or a dorm room. You know, there are fun HDR presets for gaming versus movie mode. You could easily hook this up to a Chromecast and a PC. I'm kind of like, I'm sort of working this out of my brain right now. That actually does kind of make sense if space is at a premium. Now, it's tough to demonstrate what I'm talking about because there's no angle in my office where it's not catching some light or reflections except for exactly where I sit to shoot and podcast and edit. The panel, thankfully, is not super glossy. That would totally suck. But I really need a longer office to light this properly and not have it just have glare all over the screen. The backlighting is very good. Now, I got to play with some cheaper curved monitors a while back while I was at Newegg and consistency used to be an issue. I feel we're doing pretty good here, aided by solid contrast. I'm in my office at night trying to eliminate any potential light glow from anything in here to get the sample. In near blackout, this is pretty close to what this looks like to my eye. If you need to see my sample's exact pattern of backlighting, here's what it looks like with my camera set to its maximum ISO. You'll never see this in real life. It takes an extreme representation to see that pattern. So I think this is good. I think this is very good. When it comes to trading up to a larger display, I only twitch a little when we talk about right tool for the right job. I have a little portable OLED that I'm gonna be reviewing soon. I have a really nice art monitor and there are specific tasks those different displays are better suited for. But then I fire up a game, which is kind of the point here and see that refresh rate and how a screen like this almost feels like a kind of virtual reality as it occupies more of my field of view and you get what the gig is, you know, right job for the right tool. There's a difference between using this monitor for fun and trying to test it, but I'm not really a twitchy gamer. These days I can't hang with first person shooters much. I, I start to get motion sick pretty fast, especially if there's ever a vehicle sequence. I don't think I would recommend this for the really competitive battle royale or squad shooter players. Some people might think it's overkill, but if you really need the most responsive and twitchiest reactions, a higher refresh flat panel probably makes more sense. I do better with third person action titles. I'm 
terrible at real-time strategy, but I love seeing a huge map. I love arcadey games, twin-stick shooters. I desperately wanted to demo this monitor by only playing Vampire Survivors, but I just couldn't bring myself to do that to you. There's a great balance here of higher refresh and expansive area. It's plenty responsive for all but the most competitive applications. It's also the first monitor I've ever had in my office where I might have issues with game compatibility. Ultra wide, the UW Quad HD. My favorite testing titles like Control and Hellblade knew exactly what to do with this and they looked fantastic. Older titles in arcade games struggle the most, giving you some hilarious pillar boxing. It's also probably not gonna play well with game streaming services. We often tap out on aspect ratio before we're filling this whole display. Then I fire up other media like movies, especially really wide, cinema-wide films, and that's when this whole thing clicked. My primary experiences with ultrawides have been for gaming commentary, like my old gig at Newegg. The office and productivity stuff isn't as sexy, but it is more practical than I was expecting. There are times I still want the higher pixel density on my UHD art monitor, but the vast majority of my work would still look very good at QHD. But I'm um, also a movie junkie, playing around with films and HDR settings, having the curves start to resemble the look of a farther away movie screen, that really helped bring this all together. It's a single purchase that will perform well for a variety of tasks, and it's handy to use not just for a desktop, but could mix well with other display applications. It's totally silly and it can't really play games at this resolution, but even the Steam Deck menus will properly format to this display aspect ratio. Or pop in a phone cable like on my Moto Edge Plus and the desktop mode will also occupy all this space. There are more things that we can be doing with our nice fancy computer monitors. The Cooler Master 34 CWQ ARG GB lists for $650 full MSRP, but it's regularly being sold on sale in the mid 500s, putting it right in line with middle tier offerings from Samsung, Asus, and LG. It's a bit to spend on a single monitor, but I think we're spot on for features, image quality, and practicality. It's totally easy finding higher performance, faster panels. 160 Hertz LG will ballpark around $700. A dual quad HD Samsung will sell for around a thousand. And a 200 Hertz ROG will drop for around two thousand dollars. Cooler Master isn't going after that audience. Cooler Master is hitting the crossover tier. Someone who might be stepping up from 1080p, stretching beyond 16 by 9, and looking to play with more fun stuff in a screen. Faster refresh, HDR options, with very nice picture quality. I'm really digging it. It is changing up my workflow and my gaming time, and it's a sweet spot for the company to offer some solid competition. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on this 34-inch gaming monster from Cooler Master. And thank you so much to the folks at Cooler Master for sending this my way so I could take it for a test drive. I think I have a really good idea on what I'm going to permanently replace my Asus with. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough, those folks who are, checking out the links in my video description. Maybe you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com. Maybe you're buying some merch. Or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. Patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Well, so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.